hello to all the shooters and reloaders and three circles passengers and members out there. It's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And guess what? What you're looking at are CO2 cylinders. And Crosman also makes these things. What they do is they take carbon dioxide and compress it into these cylinders. And there's all kinds of ways to take carbon dioxide out of the air. New ways being dreamed up by MIT engineers as we speak. But we've always taken carbon dioxide out of the air for our carbonated beverages, for our carbon dioxide fire extinguishers, taking the carbon dioxide out of the air for nuclear submarines so they can stay submerged for months at a time. But we also use it for air guns. What we have here are Umarex and Gamo. Crosman also makes these. And there are other manufacturers, but look at those beauties. Now, it just so happened that after I bought this from Midway USA, they are now out of stock. So we'll have to wait for them to get some more. But you might say, well, that's a lot of tubes of carbon dioxide. And you might be right. Well, speaking of Crosman, look, look what we have here. This is a bottle of 6,000 Crosman BBs. And what I have here is a whole case of Daisy BBs. This thing's heavy. They're full of these things. And I got those a long time ago when these were 48 cents for a box of BBs. And there's 750 in each. Now that seems like a lot of BBs, right? Goodness. So many BBs. I'm wearing my whites today so I can show you this Umarex Steel Storm. It's a BB gun that's CO2 powered and it has a selector switch for a single or six round burst. And the way it works is, first you have to press the magazine release over here and then press a the little release button in the back to take out the little magazine that holds the CO2 cylinders. So you remove the cover plate here like so and then you have to take a couple of CO2 cylinders but then use some gun oil this is specially made pellet gun oil or BB gun oil from Beeman's you can't just use any oil apparently some of the oils have additives in there that's not good for the seals in our air guns so Beeman's and what you do is you put a drop of oil right on the little orifice here. So we applied the oil, then you go ahead and snap those in, like so. But then you put it back into the gun like that. And the recommendation is to make sure that it's on safe, which it is, you don't see the red dot. Then take the little wrench that they supply and go ahead and puncture the CO2 cylinders. Like that. Then puncture the other one. like that. Then you don't want to lose this little wrench. Go ahead and put this back on. Snap it back on. Okay, we snap that back on. Next step is to open the reservoir up here by sliding the front sight back, opening up the reservoir whereby you can pour about 300 BBs into the reservoir. Let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so either through the bottle or with a package, you pour them in. These happen to be the Daisy Golden BBs. They call them the Golden Bullseye BBs. These BBs are about uh, 50 years old, but I mic'd them and they mic out at 1705 inches, which is standard for the BBs. Same as the Crossman BBs that are new. Okay, then, this is not a toy. It's actually an air gun that uh, we treat just like regular firearms. So you pull back the charging handle to charge it. Then you shake a whole tube of BBs into this little receptacle. And then you unlock the little, the little slide here and lower it back down onto the string of BBs. Now this means it's ready to go. We have it set on single shot. Take the safety off or we're ready to shoot. Well, this is rather amazing because at my 16 foot range, the sights are dead on. And when I shoot single shot, it shoots one, but sometimes two BBs. And it's hitting right on point of aim, and it's pretty accurate at 16 feet. So we charge it, keep the safety off. So you see those two shots are right where I was aiming. And if you look carefully up there, the bigger holes are 22 caliber. The small holes right there, dead center, are BBs. And I just shot those. So those sights are right on. The unfortunate thing is, though, the sound is fairly loud. And in this enclosed area, it kind of magnifies it so that the neighbors might not the velocity of these BBs is around 430 feet per second so they are not to be trifled with we we need to always keep the muzzle in a safe direction well here we go with burst fire that was mighty impressive Okay, let's go ahead and do some 16 foot shooting, single shot and then burst. That sure looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? And it is. I'm smiling the whole time. So the Umarex at 16 feet is a very impressive beast. Also against the stray tin can. Now what we found out was that a lot of times we forget to take the safety off and the gun seems to malfunction, but it's not malfunctioning, the safety's on. Another time is the little lever. So you see the safety is on right now, but the little loading lever for the BBs, you have to push this slider and catch it. And then shake the BBs from the reservoir into this tube. So you see the BBs all line up, then very carefully release the lever and lower it down onto the string of BBs. If this little follower gets all the way to the end, then your on deck magazine is not filled and then when you fire, all you do is shoot CO2. And you'll wonder what's going on. Well, you didn't charge the BBs. So you gotta charge the BBs and every once in a while look at this to make sure you've got BBs in reserve. Now if if your 
not gentle with this, this could smash down onto the BBs and be a problem. So gently handle this lever. So those are some of the things we learned about the Umarex steel storm. It's a lot of fun. And then you don't want to store the gun with CO2 cylinders in place. So when you're done shooting, you have to empty the CO2 cylinders so you can store it. They recommend also to take the BBs out by opening up the reservoir and pouring them out. The way you release the residual carbon dioxide is to go ahead and take this plate off while the magazine is still in the gun and go ahead and unscrew these bolts here and that releases the cylinders so all the CO2 will release into the air and that will empty the cylinders so that you can take this out and they recommend that you just crack these slowly so you release the, the CO2 gently. Best would be to shoot the cylinders empty. You get about 30 shots of full auto per two cylinders, but I found that you get more than that. But then again, I did some single shots also, and the single shots may actually use the same amount of CO2 as the full auto. But uh, I found that more than 30 shots were available per two cylinders because when I got done shooting and I released this, only very little bit of CO2 was remaining. All in all, I had a whale of a good time shooting the Umarex Steel Storm. You can see what happens with a full auto burst on a tin can. So at any rate, this is a lot of fun and I calculated that I spent about $2 for that amount of fun. This little wrench for doing the cylinders is easily lost. They give you a little hole there so you can attach it by a lanyard, but it's still easily lost. What Umarex does gives you a spare wrench inside a little holder right here on this little cover plate. I found that one reservoir of BBs is usually enough for one set of CO2 cylinders. And when you're done, you don't want to have tension on this BB slide lever. So let, let this be empty here. But if you have a few BBs left in here, you can go ahead and empty those out as per instructions. Now this has a under rail for lights and also a top rail for mounting such as red dot sights. And uh, a red dot sight would be absolutely awesome on this because it's accurate in the first place with the regular sights. But if you put red dots on there, it would be a lot faster acquisition. One thing Umarex didn't do was give you little rings here for tactical slings. That would be nice. Well, if you had access to a deserted paintball field, this would be great fun and you'd want to have a couple of packages of these as well as one of these. Now, what the instructions don't tell you is that the charging handle is still charged when you go ahead and get ready to put this away. So the best thing to do is to take it off safe and then point in a safe direction and uncharge you see uncharge that so you take the pressure off the spring because if you don't do that who knows you might come back and find that the spring is all weakened and the thing won't function so take the pressure off the charging handle before you store this now these 50 year old daisy bb's work just fine but that's because they were stored in a nice dry environment if you got bad BBs don't use them because they'll jam so and the instructions say do not reuse BBs because the BBs may have hit a hard surface and deformed and if you try and use those again they'll jam however you could pick up the used BBs with a Frankfurt Arsenal magnet that we use to pick up steel pins from our wet tumbling. You could use that magnet to pick up the used BBs 
and reuse them in snake loads, in shot capsules. And we need to clean up our area, all the used cans, especially the ones that have shards from having the exit wounds. So clean these up, squash them down, and make sure that they're not a hazard in the, your area. You guys all have a very nice day. This is Fortune Cookie 45LC. See you in the next video.